Good morning, my name is Elizabeth Chimwaza and I'm your tutor for English Communication A. I'm going to take you through this contact class for examination-based uh, questions for 2022. The subject code is POLC Inc. A. Welcome to Certificate Policing Module 2, English Communication A in particular. I'm your tutor for, for English Communication A and I will mark your assignment as well as the examination for this subject. I wish you all to be hardworking, dedicated and self-driven students in this course. This presentation will cover examination questions, general guidelines in writing exams will be explained. I'm also going to take you through some of the important uh, topics that I feel they need emphasis when you are going through this study guide. Subject overview. Throughout your career, you will be required to describe events in English in your own words. People must have a clear purpose in learning English. They must know why they want to learn English. One may just want to act efficiently as police officer serving customers. Here too, you need to know English to deal with your most valuable customer. English is one of the most widely spoken language around the world as well as the most taught. Many people learn English as their foreign or second language and it is the lingua franca for business. If you learn English, you will be able to go ahead because English is an international language. Exit learning outcomes. Upon completion of this module, students should be able to identify different types of speech. Okay, now when it comes to identifying different types of speech, there are nine types of, there are nine parts of speech in English. We have articles, nouns, pronouns, adjective, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. When it comes to articles, for example, we have A, N, and D, a boy, a car, an apple, an egg. Okay, we use A when we have a noun that starts with a consonant. For example, a boy. We use N when we have a noun that starts with a consonant, with a vowel, I'm sorry, for example, an egg. But however, there are some vowels when you are pronouncing them, they sound like consonant. For example, um, with the word uh, university, the vowel U in university and the vowel U in uniform, it's as if you are pronouncing it with a Y, but the Y is not there. So if you come across such nouns, you say a university, not an university, because the vowel sounds like, an, like a consonant. And we also have a consonant that are silent. When they are silent, it's, it's as if they are not there. For example, our H-O-U, are for time one hour two hours we say an hour because the h is silent it's as if it's not there nouns nouns are names of uh, people animals places and objects we have different nouns we have general nouns and we have specific nouns we have abstract nouns we have collective nouns we have singular and plural nouns. We have countable and count uncountable nouns. Okay, so 
you need to know every type of you need to know each and every type of nouns so that when you are writing you are using the proper noun we also have pronouns pronouns are words that are used to replace nouns for example uh, pronouns we have uh, personal pronouns under personal pronouns we have subject pronouns uh, I you he she it and me we also have demonstrative pronouns we have possessive pronouns we have um, relative pronouns and we have reflexive pronouns these are all types of pronouns that you need to know we have adjectives Adjectives are used to describe nouns. They tell us more about nouns. Okay, you need to describe um, a car. You can describe a car using the color. You can describe a car using the mech, the, the, the model of the car. You can describe the car using uh, the speed. How fast can it go? So the words that you are going to be using to describe the car, for example, I have a fast blue car. Now, fast and blue are adjectives that are describing the car. We have verbs. Okay, so when it comes to verbs, the main things that we need to focus on is the subject verb agreement and also the verb tenses. The verb tenses, we have the singular, simple, pa, simple present, simple, simple present tense, simple past tense, simple continuous uh, tense. We have the present continuous tense. We have the past continuous, the past continuous uh, tense. We have the present perfect tense. We have the past perfect tense, and we also have the present continuous tense. So these tenses, you also need to master them. We also have adverbs when it comes to parts of part of speech. Adverbs now they tell us more about the verb. For example, adverbs we have adverbs of manner they tell us how the action was uh, done. She wrote she 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 writes fast. Uh she writes slowly. Okay, so slowly becomes the ad the adverb that is describing the verb of on uh, which is right. How does she write? She writes slowly. Slowly becomes the adverb. We have prepositions. Prepositions, for example, in, on, out, between, uh, over, across, under. These are examples of preposition. And we also have conjunctions. Conjunctions are used to combine sentences. So we have um, conjunctions like and, because, or, but, so, yet. These are different conjunctions that we can use to combine sentences. We also have interjections. Interjection, they uh, bring across the element of anger or the element of surprise when it comes to a sentence. Okay, so you are also expected to use punctuation marks. Now, when it comes to punctuation marks, some punctuation marks, if you don't know how to use them properly, if you don't know the function of the punctuation mark in a sentence, it means you are going to distort the meaning of the sentence. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of a full stop and a question mark. You are supposed to put a full stop on a statement and you are supposed to put a question mark on a question. So if you mix the two, maybe the, 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 the statement you put a question mark. That's the meaning of, a st of, of the sentence has changed because you've, you put the wrong punctuation mark. And also, if a punctuation mark is not necessary, do not use it. Don't use commas for the sake of using commas when they are not needed. Don't use semicolons or colons when there is no purpose for that punctuation mark in a sentence. Okay, so now when it comes to punctuation marks, you need to know how to use a full stop question mark. You need how to use, you need to know the functions and the use of a comma. You need to know the function and the use of a colon. You need to know the use and the function of a semicolon. Uh, you also expected to illustrate the different types of questions. Okay, now this is a very examinable quest, uh, uh, learning outcome where you are going where you might be asked to uh, 
explain the different types of questions okay so now when it comes to different type of questions we have for example we have direct questions we have indirect questions we have um uh for example we also have um let me think direct questions, indirect questions, we have command questions. So these are different types of questions that you are expected to know. There are about six or seven types of questions that you are supposed to know. Okay, use the active and passive voice and also you need to apply direct and indirect speech. Now, using uh, active and passive voice and applying direct and indirect speech, this... Uh, learning outcome it brings you also on the use of tenses because with active and passive voice and indirect speech you also the 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 the, the, the tense of the verb determines also the quest the the, the 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 active voice sentence or the passive voice sentence it also determines the direct speech sentence so if you don't know your tenses you might not know how to change from active to passive voice you also have to explain skimming scanning and intensive reading what is skimming what is scanning what is intensive reading and what is the difference between skimming scanning and intensive reading when it comes to the english language okay now let's us quickly look at the examination questions these examination questions are discussed as they appear on the tutorial letter for 2022 here are the questions as follows Number one, discuss the importance of a policing student to have knowledge of the use of comparative and superlative forms. To discuss, you are expected to give a clear description of the importance for the policing student to have knowledge of the use of comparative and superlative forms. Okay, now uh, comparative and superlative forms, let me take you back to our part of speech. This comes from adjective. Okay, now when you are describing using adjective, we also have what is called the comparative and the superlative uh, form. You use the comparative form when you are describing uh, two nouns. You are comparing two nouns. Uh, sorry, you are not describing. You are comparing two nouns. For example, you want to uh, compare the academic levels for John and Peter. So you will say the comparative form, uh, you will say John is um, more intelligent than Peter. More intelligent becomes your comparative form. So you are comparing two people and now the superlative form we are comparing three or more people for example still using the academic level you say john is the most intelligent of them all because when you say of them all maybe there are five maybe it's the whole class so uh you need to why now when it comes to this a question you need now to put it into context on why you as a policing student must have knowledge of the use of comparative and superlative form please also use examples on how to use comparative and superlative form in policing please don't take your examples out of context remember this is a policing uh, course so all the examples should be related to policing do not go and start giving me examples of things that are not related to policing and that will make it that you'll be taking it out of context always try to put your examples in relation in relation to the policing course question two differentiate between the use of a colon and a semicolon and give examples of each to differentiate that is to give only the differences between the use of a colon and a semicolon what is the difference simply state the differences you also need to give examples of each sentence so if you say a colon tell me what is a colon and give an example of a sentence where you used a colon 
and you go on now to tell me what is a semicolon and then you give me an example of a sentence where a semicolon was used that's how you give the example for this question question three give the significance of why and how sentences are joined together let me take you back again to my part of speech we said we join sentences using conjunctions we also join sentences we also join sentences using punch, some punctuation marks for example the full stop and the comma is used when it comes to joining sentences now you need to give us the reason why why do you join sentences in english is why is it necessary is it necessary for you to combine the sentences and you have you also give an example of each so you explain the reasons for joining the sentences and give examples of how we can join sentences in English. So if you are going to use the conjunctions and maybe you are going to use the conjunction although or whether you are going to use the conjunction because you need to give me an example where because is used to join a sentence, uh, two sentences. If you are going to use uh, and you need to give an example of where and is used and used to combine two sentences together if you are using a comma you need to give me a sentence where a comma was used to join a sentence but now when you are using a comma it's not necessarily joining sentence maybe it will be uh, a sentence is long so you just need to separate it to show us okay this is part of the question and this one is also part of the question question four discuss different types of questions for investigating a case and give examples of each you simply need to list the type of questions for investigating a question okay so i said uh, we have direct and indirect questions we have open ended questions we also have closed closed uh questions these are different types of uh investigating uh questions so you give me also an example of the type of questions if you say this is an open ended question give me the example of an open ended question if you say this is a closed question uh, uh closed uh, question give me an example of a closed question don't just list okay my point is don't just list the different types of questions that are used to investigate list them after you've listed them or rather list and give an example list and give an example so that you avoid not forgetting to put the example at the end of the day uh question five discuss skimming scanning and intensive reading method and give examples of each uh, discuss what is skimming, scanning, and intensive reading with the aid of example. Okay, now you need to define what is skimming. You need to define what is scanning. You need to define what is intensive reading. Okay, when it's skimming, skimming is just going through quickly, rapidly with your eyes. That is to skim. Scanning, you are simply searching for a word. Scanning, you are simply searching for a word or a phrase. Now, intensive reading, you are now reading for understanding. So now you give me an example when you can use skimming. When can you use scanning and when can you use intensive reading? Uh, question six. Complete the sentences using the words in bold. If you get an example of a, say, of, a, of, a, of a question where there are words that you need to use, familiarize yourself with the words first before you go to answering the questions. Some people have a tendency of just picking random words. You are given 10 words and you see there are 10 questions. You just choose randomly. You don't even read whether it's going to go together, whether it's going to make sense at the end of the day. I don't know whether you are in a hurry or is it the time constraints that is making you do that but please familiarize yourself with the words first after you familiarize with the words first now go 
use those words to answer the, 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 the questions. Question seven, read the following text and underline the correct answer. You get a question where it needs you to read the text and then you need to underline the answer. Uh, the instruction is quite clear. It says underline the answer. You find some people going to circle the answer or they go to only put the answer and they don't write the question itself. Follow instructions to avoid uh, penalization. Uh, you might be penalized, you might be, marks might be subtracted. I'm not saying they are going to be, but it's a possibility that marks might be subtracted for simply not following instructions. So you need to read carefully the text and underline the correct answers from the given words. You also need to, when you are picking or underlining um, answers, you pay attention to your spellings and also to your grammar. It won't be English if you are writing wrong grammar or you are writing spellings. Then the purpose of studying English will be lost because you are simply writing spellings that you want. You are simply writing wrong grammatical terms. So you also need to pay attention and pay attention to the spellings and grammar and punctuation marks when you are doing this type of activity. Uh, question eight. Rewrite and make corrections on the following sentences that are grammatically wrong. Now the instruction says rewrite. I've seen uh, papers where the wrong, uh, the wrong word has been cancelled and you leave it like that. Instead of rewriting, you just go on and pick the mistake and then you cancel that wrong uh, uh, word or the wrong grammar and then you write it on top and not rewriting. That is not the way you're supposed to do it. You simply need to follow instructions and rewrite and make the corrections. Okay, so now here you correct all the grammar and spelling mistakes and then rewrite the sentence correctly. Read the sentence and identify the adjective and the noun that has been described. Okay, going back again to our parts of speech where we have adjectives and nouns. So if you don't know your adjectives and you don't know your nouns, this question might be a bit difficult for you because you don't know what you're supposed to identify. Uh, you might do it vice versa. Where it's supposed to be a noun, you make it an adverb, an adjective, sorry. And where it was supposed to be an ad, 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 adverb, you make it an, an, um, a noun. Uh, Some time ago, this type of question you were told uh, that the, the instruction was uh, circle the noun and uh, underline the adverb. Uh, sorry, the adjective. Circle the noun and underline the, the, the adjective. So if you go on and circle the adjective and underline the noun, it means you don't know what is just by simply not following instruction. You know what is a noun, you know what is an advert, but you went on to do the wrong thing. You went on to underline instead of circling. So it means your answer is going to be wrong and you're not going to be awarded a mark. Uh, 8.3, indicate whether the following statements are true or false. True or false statements are very tricky. True or false statements should not be done in a rush. You need to read understand and find out whether the statement is true or false. Read the statement carefully and indicate it whether it's true or false. Uh, question nine, you might also get multiplication uh, choice question. You simply choose the correct answer from the choices that are provided. Okay, now the tricky part of uh, answering multiplication choices uh, besides the answer itself, is how are you choosing your multiplication choice? Follow the instruction. Did the instruction say write the answers only? Did the instruction say circle the correct answer? Uh, did the uh, instruction say write the correct answer? As in, if A is uh, punctuation marks are not important. Are you going to write it as punctuation marks are going to are not important or you are just simply going to write it as a so you need to pay attention to these things again 
Uh, now with multiplication uh, 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 section, this, sec this section mainly focuses on grammar, uh, the part of speech, and the punctuation mark. Question 10. Identify the following part of speech. So if you have noticed already, part of speech is a major, major examinable question. So you need to go master your part of speech. So in this uh, uh, question, for example, you are given a text. You are given a passage. So you need to identify the noun, the verb, the verb in the present tense, the verb in the infinite or the simplest form, the verb in the plural form. This is verb, but you need to identify three different verbs with certain uh, uh, order. So you need the verb where it's a present tense, present tense specific, uh, present tense, whether it's an uh, infinite or simple form, or whether it's plural. Okay, you also need to identify the pronoun in the text, the preposition, the conjunction, the definite article. The definite article is the. A and N are indefinite article. And now the, the last part, you need to identify two different indefinite article. So you simply identify and write the following part of speech from a passage provided. Now, uh, B would ask you to rewrite the above passage and insert the appropriate punctuation mark and correct the spell. So what you do here is you rewrite the passage using correct punctuation, correct spelling, and correct grammar. Uh, students, I repeat again, the instruction is rewrite. Rewrite is mean you are copying. And when you are copying the text, you are copying it now correctly uh, using the correct punctuation mark, correct spelling, and the correct grammar. Don't go and write on top of the text. On, on top of the passage or the text, rewrite it and then you need to correct. Instruction in information to, to candidates when, what should you do in these assignments? You provide sufficient answers, meaning do not write too little or too much. Also check mark allocated to determine the length of your answer. A question which is awarded one mark does not need as much information as a question which is awarded uh, five marks. So pay attention to the mark allocation. It will guide you on um, the amount of information that you need to put at, uh, on different questions. Try by all means to use your own words and refer to your own experience. Do not go and simply copy and paste the study guide. Uh, do not just simply copy the examples that are in the study guide. Find your own examples from your own experience. Uh, you have uh, been listening to different people. You have seen different things on TV. Take those experiences and try to use them uh, when you're answering um, the question. And when I say on experience, I don't necessarily mean, uh, now give me personal examples. Remember I said, this is a policing uh, module, this is a policing course, so all the examples should be in context, should be in context with the policing. It should be in context with uh, studying policing. Don't go and give me medical examples or give me uh, IT examples when this is a policing course. Um, make sure your statements, ideas make sense of what you intend to say. Good luck with the examination. And also, I would advise you not to wait until last minute to write your assignment. This will show in your answering. Also, some assignments, they always come back with an answered question. This will tell me simply that the, 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 the student waited until last minute to answer, to answer the assignment. Do not hesitate to contact me should you experience some challenges in your studies. My contact details, email zabe.chim at yahoo.com. My mobile number is 0817-356-991.
And you can only contact me through my number uh, during office hours, Monday to Friday, from 9 o'clock until 4 o'clock. Thank you. Goodbye.